Today we're making these rich and creamy mini cheesecakes. Grab your muffin pan and cupcake liners. These are super easy to make and if I can do it, so can you. Let's get started. First, we're gonna start off by making the graham cracker crust. We need exactly seven of these graham cracker sheets. We're gonna toss them in a sandwich baggie and crush them up with the back of our measuring cup. If you want it done quicker, you can always use a food processor. Okay, this looks perfect. We need one cup of the finely crushed graham crackers and one and a half tablespoons of sugar. We're gonna give this a quick mix before we add in three tablespoons of melted butter. Mix this until everything looks evenly coated. I will have an ingredients list pop up towards the end of this video. It's also listed with the directions down in the video's description box. This looks about as good as it's gonna get to a standard size muffin pan lined with cupcake liners. We're gonna add in about two tablespoons of the graham cracker mixture to each cavity. Using your fingers, the back of a wooden spoon, or in my case, I'm using this pestle, we're gonna press the mixture into an even layer on the bottom of each cupcake liner. You don't have to press hard, just stamp it down, maybe hold the paper liner while you do it. Then we're gonna bake this in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for five minutes. While that's in the oven, let's make the filling. To a small bowl, we need three quarters of a cup of sugar and one and a half tablespoons of all-purpose flour. We're just gonna give this a quick mix and then set it off to the side. To a big mixing bowl, we need two eight ounce packages of softened cream cheese. Toss in that flour sugar mixture we just mixed and turn on your electric handheld mixer on the lowest setting. We're gonna mix this until everything looks smooth. Okay, this looks lovely, let's scrape the bowl. We wanna make sure we don't have any unmixed chunks of cream cheese anywhere. Next goes in two eggs, one at a time, mixing between each addition, still mixing on the lowest setting. Once the eggs are fully mixed in, add in a quarter cup of heavy cream, a quarter cup of sour cream, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. If there's one thing we want to try to avoid while making cheesecake, it's adding in too much air. Over mixing or mixing on high speeds will add in too much air to the cheesecake, which will cause it to crack during the baking process. Basically, the force of air bubbles popping during the baking process will make those unsightly cracks. Of course, so does over baking your cheesecake, that'll do it too. Also, as a side note, if you're making this in your stand mixer, use the paddle attachment, not the whisk. Once your cheesecake mixture looks creamy dreamy, give it one more scrape with that spatula. Now, even though we were really careful and did everything we could to prevent any bubble parties, there are still gonna be some bubbles lingering in the filling. To get rid of as many as we can, we're gonna tap the mixing bowl against the countertop for a good 60 seconds to help bring those bubbles to the surface. I, however, love my ceramic mixing bowl and don't want to break it, so I'm just going to slap the sides and rotate it and keep slapping. This should do the trick as well. I'm also going to use a skewer, a toothpick works just as good too, and cut through the bubbles like so. Just keep switching between slapping your bowl and or slamming it down if you can. Once you're satisfied, we're going to top our graham cracker crust with our filling, and yes, we're going to fill each one all the way up to the top. We don't need to leave any room for growth, it's not going anywhere. If anything, it'll just dome a little, but it'll barely be noticeable. This is it, last chance to shake out any air bubbles, grab a toothpick and do a quick check. Into the oven at 325 degrees for 18 to 23 minutes, depending on your oven. Now you will want to remove them with the center just barely jiggling. Don't freak out and think they need to stay in longer, you want a slight jiggle in the center. Here, I'll show you. Oh, and I took mine out right at 18 minutes. Once they're out of the oven, we're gonna leave them in the baking pan for one hour on the countertop to finish firming. During this time, the top should drop down a little, which is totally normal. After one hour on the counter, we need to loosely cover these and let them chill in the fridge for two hours. I was completely out of cling wrap and foil, so I popped mine into two gallon Ziploc baggies. And here they are, not too bad. I see a bubble that almost popped. Now here's the thing to consider. If you wanna serve these without cupcake liners and you want to avoid this, then you'll need to pop them in the freezer to really firm up. Probably 30 minutes should do the trick. Honestly though, this doesn't bother me like I thought it would. But if it bothers you, then the freezer is the way to go. Just be sure to cover it so it doesn't dry out in the freezer. Here's that ingredients list. Doesn't that look so delicious? And it was, I ate both of those after filming. <laughs> what a treat. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out and I'll see you all in the next video.